Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. So I'm Laura Gillot, and I started in 1992 selling real estate, um, and um, I started with an office in Lebanon, Oregon, which is where I still am at today, and Lebanon um, right now is about a town of 17,000 people. Wow, and, smaller um, than yeah. I thought. Okay, I was thinking it was like 30, Tony said. Yeah, no, it's 17. And though, although we do have other areas that we service, so um, there's Sweet Home and Albany and Corvallis and Sio, um, probably the largest town of those towns are about 50,000 people. Um, and so, um, and, and our town is rural. So between our towns is like grassland and farm ground and all that great stuff. It's not like big housing subdivisions or anything to that nature. So um, not a ton of homes, um, but enough to keep us all real busy, which is great. And so I didn't really start tracking my numbers that well until um, moving over to Keller Williams in 2012, um, which was one of the best decisions I've made in my life. And, um, and during that time when we moved over, um, let me just look here. I think I have a little thing here. My, yeah. my memory's not the best. Let me just look at here and see on my little scripting page. Um, I think after the last two and a half years, like everything's, a, I can't remember any, everything's a blur. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just crazy. I think when we came over, it was like, we were doing like 152 transactions okay. in 2012. But if you look at that in comparison to how many transactions there were done in our town, we were still taking a majority of the market share um, during that time. So probably what I've noticed the most over going over time is yes, we've had more sales in our town. So we average between five to maybe 600 sales in our town a year. So there's two sides to that, so 1200 sales. Um, and so, you know, during that time when there was less sales, there was also less agents because it was 2012 and there wasn't that much competition for those for those transactions. So when we came over, I think on the listing side, we had like a 42% market share. Wow. Um, when we came, but we only took 88 listings, you know, but there was only like a 212 listings taken. So, yeah. so that kind of shows you what happened. So as the, as we got grew larger and now we're up to like 550 sales, um, when, as a, that grew larger, also the number of sales grew and also the number of competition and other agents, people getting onesie twosies, all that great stuff happened also. Yeah. So right now on our listing marketing share is about 25%. So okay. to kind of give you an idea of what, what we run on, on for Lebanon. Now we also service those other areas. So all of our business is not in Lebanon only because we service the other areas outside of our area. Right. Um, but we don't have any expansion or anybody else in any other market centers or anything to that nature. We just basically decided that we would go deep in the areas that we serve and just try to get like at least 25% market share in every town. And that would give us a thousand transactions, you know, wow. pretty easily just by yeah. staying local and servicing at a deep level. So, so that what was, is, what does your team ahead. actually look like? Like how many okay. agents are selling? Yeah, so um, I should get my org chart out here and I can share that with you guys. I'm going to write yeah. down some things. So, yeah, someone yeah. should keep track of what I said I'm going to share. I will. I'll, I'll, keep track. Right. I'll keep track. I'll keep track of what you're going to share. And you guys okay. will send this out um, in the recap email with a recording too. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. So I'll share my org chart with you. I believe right today we have 37 people on our team. And if I remember right, I think like 16 are agents. Okay, so you're heavy balance. off. Yeah, so we have like four transaction coordinators who are also licensed brokers, but they don't actually practice in selling. Um, basically, everyone on our team is licensed except for like three people. Okay. Um, and so they all help get referrals and send people to the business and their, and their family and friends and things. And we can pay them a, you know, a, a referral fee from, from the transaction because they are licensed. Um, so that also helps. So I think we're all boots on the ground, but not everyone opens up doors or takes listings. Yeah. So okay. Kind of okay. Give you an idea of what we're at right now. So, and and you know, this year I think I think we're at three thirty five on um, families served. Um, our volume is ahead of last year, but our numbers just this last month fell behind last year's numbers. Yeah. Um, so August, we were running. 
Yeah, we were running about 17% ahead. And I was like, yes, we're going to have the best year ever. And then um, then the brakes kind of hit the market and um, we seen our pendings go down and I knew we were not going to hit our pending number of August. So I knew we were going to fall behind, um, but we're all digging in and, and, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to bold, there's that good, um, little chicken story. We're all digging for worms and new spots and, and trying to, you know, generate those leads. Yeah. Love so, that. Love that. Yeah. What percentage of the, how much are you doing personally yourself still? Yeah. So in 2017, I brought on a listing partner um, okay. onto our team. Um, I basically cherry picked the ones that I wanted to go on. The people that knew me well, that I could hand off. I, I did those transactions and she did the balance. I think she closed 72 transactions that year. And she's wow. like, oh my gosh, the wheels are falling off the bus. You need more help. I can't do this no more. I'd like to get married and have babies. So I was like, okay, that sounds great. So we brought on four listing partners and I basically then stepped out. Okay. Got of, it. Of the day to day. So, so what I do, I'm still a co-agent on everything. I'm still very involved. I'm here at the office, you know, 60 hours a week. Um, I still go on some CMA, uh, but I always bring somebody with me. Okay. So I always bring a listing partner with me or have, a, if I have a buyer consultation with someone that's coming in, I always bring in a, another person and then I'll just do the handoff. Yep. So, so that's kind of how we work on that. Um, okay. Our agents during the listing process, um, from the time contract signed to the time they go under contract, they do CCC, do CC me on every email yeah. um, that goes to the clients. We do client recaps and stuff, and and I'm involved if there's any hiccups or problems, or if they can't get all their agent, I'll step in. Mm -hmm. um, so still boots on the ground, but not taking a client all by myself. I I, I don't cherry pick them where I share everything. Okay. So if we'll, so let's back up because I know we have a lot of people that they're actually just starting to build teams. Yeah. Um, so, well, and I, we, we get a lot of questions on the pass off. So how, yes. how do you, um, what's the best way to say it? How do you actually handle the pass off? And because people know Laura and want Laura, how does that go over <laughs> with your clients? Yeah, so I just let them know that I'm the principal broker here of the team and that I would love to take their listing, but if someone on our team brings a buyer in that I could not represent them solely and I want to make certain that they have somebody in their corner that can represent them 100%. And so that listing partner will doesn't have any fiduciary duty to the buyer. I do as being the principal you know, of our team. I know every state's a little bit different and that I want to make certain if if our buyer from our team is acting unreasonable, if you said, hey, Laura, um, is this buyer asking for unreasonable stuff? If, if, it's, if it's a buyer that's represented by a team, I could not disclose that to you. I could say, you know, I don't know. But, you know, the, our listing partner, Mackenzie or whoever's on there can say, oh, my gosh, those guys are totally being, you know, outrageous. Those are those are not great, um, you know, demands. And we need to do this like they could totally protect you. So that's why I'm here for you. But I, I also want to make certain you're protected if someone from our team brings in a client because we can't okay. control what the client wants. Mm -hmm. So, and they all seem to be fine with that and they yeah. love having someone in their corner. And then after they meet their listing partner, I'm like old news. Like they don't even want to talk to me no yeah. more. <laughs> um, they love their agents. They, the, the agent gives them a recap every week. Um, you know, and if something kind of goes bumpy or they're not having good, um, a rapport with their agent or something of that nature, they're always welcome to call me. I always say, if you can't go hold of your agent, just give me a jingle. Um, yeah. You know, they may be on an appointment, something happens, you know, like I'm, I'm not that far away. I see them when they pop in the office. Um, yeah. I'm here, but I'm not in their day-to-day -day activities. Yeah. That makes total sense. I love that. I like the, them having someone in their corner. I think that's, yeah, yeah I love that. Okay. So let's back up then. How did you, how did you get so much market share in, in, in your town? <laughs> like from the yeah. beginning, what were some of the key things that you did? Yeah. So I'm going to say the one thing is that we really focused on listings. Okay. So that was our main focus is going out and grabbing as many listings as, as possible. And of course, um, you know, Tony put that goal in my head, let's get 50% market share. And we've been chasing that ever since, but you know, we'd like one out of every four listings or one out of every two listings to be ours. Yeah. Um, and we do a lot in our town and we provide a lot to our town and we support a lot with our town. So, you know, it sometimes, um, baffles me or uh, fascinates me that someone would 
take their listing and give it to someone else in another city or something that they don't even do anything for Lebanon. You know, I mean, they, like they don't support Lebanon at all. Yeah. And nor do they care, nor do they even know much about Lebanon. And here they are giving their business to someone that doesn't even care about the town. Um, so when I when someone says, oh my gosh, you're, you're so great. You've got 30% market share. And I'm like, yeah, that means 70% of the people didn't pick us. You know, that's how I feel in my heart. It's yeah. like, how come 70% didn't pick us? And then when that time came, when um, building the team is like, I want to make certain we have enough um, great agents that can service 50% of the business. You know, that if 50% if, if of the Lebanon called us, that we wouldn't be dropping the ball, that we would have great systems, that we would be able to have great follow through, yeah. that we would be able to service those at a high level. So, you know, that's part of this. I kind of think of it like, um, like a fire station. And so if, you know, if, if five houses are on fire and I only have two firemen in the, in the group, which, which two houses are we going to save? You know, yeah. like I need to make certain that our team is robust enough that we can service that many folks at a high level. So they all feel like they're the only ones. Yeah. What are some of the things that you do um, to care about Lebanon and to be in, to be in the community and to do all of those things? Yeah, so definitely as as time goes on and we have more people, we can divide and conquer yeah. on things, but we do um, support a lot of the service organizations that are in the town. Um, we pair up on events with um, with like the Boys and Girls Club, um, Optimus Club, anything that's doing anything, we try to pair up with them. Um, we let them borrow things from us all the time. So if they want to borrow tables or have a place for their venue, they can they can um, pick our, our parking lot and our covered patio in the back uh, for that. Um, yep. We bought an ice cream tractor that makes ice cream so we can donate our time to um, give free ice cream away at their events. And we you know, just try to always change it up, but always try to be there and, and have a booth and have a giveaway and love on people and have a drawing and all that great stuff that we can build our database with more people, but just to be definitely be front and center um, to everything so we could be a good supporter of those things. Yeah. And, you know, those people support us. So we want to turn around and turn around and support them also. So yeah, it's not only in donations, but it's, it's part of our marketing also that we can put marketing dollars. If, it, if someone said, well, you know, I just need a straight donation. I have so many dollars for just donations, which is a lot smaller, but if I could do something with marketing with this event that they have, you know, I could be a title sponsor, do something as long as I'm there and able to get in front of um, our clients and invite our whole database to attend that event. So it helps them also because, um, because, you know, a, a organization makes more money or does more if they have more people attend and we want to invite all of our database to attend these, these functions. Yeah, I love that. And actually, that was gonna be my next question. I've been pushing really hard on database lately. Tony actually has been doing some coaching calls um, with us, with our leaders. And um, he has just been on us on database stuff, which is, you know, the that's it's everything. It's the everything, yeah. especially as we move into a speed-based market, not a skill-based market anymore. And he gave us the new number last week of to net a million. You know, it used to be like 1920. You had to get 1,920 people in your database on a touch to net a million. And now that number is 13,000. Um, and Tony was sharing with us some of those things about if you're new, get to 1,000 as fast as you can. If you're two to five years, get to 5,000 as fast as you can. And then after that, just do everything you can to get 13,000 in your database as quick as you can. Um, so can we talk a little bit about your database? Do you yeah. know? how many you have in your database and what kind of touching are you doing? Yeah. So our database is old and big and messy, like most people's databases are. Um, and so um, our overall database is around 60,000 people wow. that are in our database at one time or the other have opted in on something and have gotten into our database. But they will let you know that a majority of our business comes from 2,800 people yep. that are past clients or raving fans. Okay. So that you is about 2,800 like VIPs. I mean, they're your, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. They're past clients um, that are still local in the area yeah. or people that refer us and that, and hold on one second here. That's okay. <laughs> and those, those people um, do get invited to different events that are just for them. Like we do pie giveaway twice a year. 
Yeah. Um, we call through those folks. We reserve their pies. They come in and pick them up in person. Um, we normally have a luncheon or chili feed or something during the pie day. And, and that's not opened up to all of our database. That's just opened up to our past clients and our raving fans. Yep. Um, we also do like a ball game at a, at a uh, I don't know, minor league um, baseball mm -hmm. park over in Corvallis. And we invite those folks to come to that. I will let you know, we start inviting folks. Sometimes it'll be, um, we'll invite all of our people that send us referrals first. And then we open up to the next group and they open up to the next group because we never want to overfill something or not have so much room. <laughs> so yeah. we'll kind of do it in layers until we get enough RSVPs to fill up the venue and then we they will shut it off. So sometimes that does make it hard then because some people are like, hey, like I'm a raving fan and I didn't get invited. <laughs> um, and sometimes that does make it tough. And then we have to try to say, oh, these are the people that gave us referrals last year. And, you know, yeah. just kind of figure out how to do it um, and, 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 be, and be gracious with it and not not to say feel like they weren't able to come, but sometimes you can't invite everyone to those events. Yeah. Do you know how many touches total you're doing? You know what? I, I should be better at that. And we don't, I mean, we touch whenever we need to touch um, with yeah. folks and whenever we have something going. Um, of course we do like a monthly newsletter and some things to that nature, yeah. um, but we don't, and, and that's how they get information about our, our events and things that are coming up. Um, but sometimes, you know, sometimes we'll have like two or three events a month and we'll be re reminding yeah. them and touching them and telling them to, to come, come join us. And sometimes it will be a month and a half before we have an event. Yeah. So it's not, you care it's if not I, I, have your, I have your playbook, um, pulled up. Do you care if I pop that on the screen really fast? And oh, that's fine. Okay. You guys. So I've had this for, I don't honestly, Laura, I don't even know where I got it or who I got. I don't know if I got it from you or if I heard you, I, I don't know, but I've had it and I, and I've loved it for so long. Um, and I've shared it with many of you. Let's see one second. I'm going to try to share my screen really fast. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. Um, and I don't know if this is even your most up-to-date one, but I just love all of what you have on here. And so I wanted to kind of just quickly flip through it, but I love that you have systematized, like who did all of this? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was in coaching and that's, and that's what she said. She was like, you can't keep this between your ears. You need to be able to have some checklists and some things that someone else can jump in and help. So yeah. you're not doing it on yourself. And, um, you know, the new year's party, we do that every year and that, that that's something we one, invite right? everyone to do. Yes. Yeah, the top one. Yep. Um, so, so we have that and we normally have it open for you know, two to three hours and we serve food and have mimosas and we invite the whole database and we'll put it in the paper. Anybody can stop by, you know, oh, you talk do to put it in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Great. And wait, we do, where we do you invite the community at our office. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've got, um, you know what, let okay. me see something here on back end. Let me, let me screen share. Let me show you something. Cause I can okay. show you the results what happens with those. Let's see if I oh, have yeah. that open. That would be yeah. awesome. Uh, yep. Okay. So oh, I see. love this. Yeah. So this is where business came from in 2021. Um, so that may be helpful to you. Um, and I can provide this to you guys too. So put that down. I'll give you this little um, event thing I have putting on, but let me just see here if I can find our new year's event yep. and I can find a few other ones here for you, but I can go yep. through all of them. Jeez. Okay, so oh, last year, so um, let me look at this really fast. I was writing down what you were going to send. Okay, so 23%. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Did you? Oh, I'll go back. Okay. Yes. It's okay. Did that well, this say, was last year. So what's yeah, a so, forever client? So that means someone who's purchased a, a home with us before. Okay. So they're not in closings last year help happen as a repeat customer or forever client. Wow. And then 111 of them happen from our sphere. These are people that we work on our database that we know they know us, they're good yep. friends, all that good stuff, but they haven't purchased with us before. Yeah. And then um, from there we had um, call-ins um, were about 55 and that's where people that, that called in on our call? Yeah, like a sign call or someone just calling and saying, hey, I want to list my property or hey, I want to, I, I need real estate advice. So that's incoming leads um, okay. that came in from there. And then client referrals were 37. Wow. I think that would be higher, but sometimes we just don't always know exactly where that, where that 
lead comes from. Yep. Um, and then agent referrals were 43. Actually, then, Laura, can we pause on that one for one second? Because yeah. I heard I heard Gary Keller say two times this year that agent refer agent to agent referrals are like the number one miss source for most people. Do you do anything yeah. special with that? Or do you feel like now probably you shared your playbook so graciously that so many people are like, if I have anybody moving there, I'm sending it to Laura. Yeah, I just try to be active and, and, you know, just tell everyone that I'm, you know, because the service organ, and then yeah. if it's in our, you know, our backyard, we'll find you an agent that will do a great job for you. So, okay. you know, I just try to be front and center, you know, at mega camp um, and at family reunion, we hand out fishing cards, we tell people, you know, to come out to Oregon, we'll take you fishing or to a wine tour. Um, you know, we That's just try cool. to stay front and center. Yeah, yeah. So those Love are that. just some different things. Okay. Um, but as you that. notice on this is that there's not a lot of outbound, not a lot of outbound activity here. And that's yep. something we decided that we needed to change because if the market drops and that means if, you know, if your market, if the market drops 20%, that means 20% of your database isn't going to buy property. You need to find the other 20% that is, that's not in your database. Yeah. So we, this year said, Hey, we need to really focus a little bit more on outbound activities and a little better on our tracking. Um, and so, you know, the, and that's sometimes hard, you know, when you're a small town is like, how did this client come to this? And, you know, someone says, oh, this was a call off of Zillow. And I'm like, yeah, but I sold him a house in 2003. You know, I mean, like it, it, it kind of gets a little bit convoluted when you know people for a long time of how exactly you got the business. Yeah. But this kind of gives you a rundown of how we got our business. Um, it sounds like you guys have a higher average sales price, though. Is it is it like 350? I'm just like uh, 390 up. now. Wow. Yeah. Laura, that's yeah. huge. I know we've got up there now. Um, so let's see. Oh, here's your new year's. Yeah. yeah. This was New year's party on here. And from this, we had 13 people request to be on the newsletter. Six people wanted buyer consultations, nine requested for a CMA. Wow. And we track them every year, but this, that's pretty, pretty nor normal on here. You had a hundred so, families stop by though. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And we just do something easy. We do chicken or, or, and yeah. or mimosas and make it kind of fun. Yep. So, and not, we don't always do a theme on things and we do giveaways like this. So we'll do, um, you know, like a reverse bowl. People can call into the office. We did this more during COVID. So we weren't able to have as many events. Right. So we've slowed down on this. Now we're just doing one a quarter. So we have a co cooler giveaway now that will give, and we just do have every season change. We'll have a yeah. drawing for that. And, um, and then we'll take that item to different events and continue getting signups for a while. So it doesn't, it's not just one and done. It, it, we were Love able that. to use some a little bit longer on there. Um, and so that makes it kind of fun. And this would be an example of something that we did was like a brew fest, which is um, par paired up with a boys and girls club. Okay. And, um, and so when they asked us to sponsor the stage of this um, event, which means we would pay money and then have our banner along the stage, we'd say, well, we don't mind sponsoring, but we want to be there. And they were like, well, what do you want to do here? Like you guys don't sell beer and you don't really do <laughs> beer. What are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't care. Put us in the corner. Give us the last booth. I don't care. I, we just want to be there. Yeah. And so we had a little growler made up. We gave them, we invited all of our clients to come. They gave us VIP tickets. We were able to do drawings, giving away the VIP tickets, you know, also gave their event exposure. Yeah. Um, and then we just told people to come by and enter in to win. And we had 431 people enter in to win and 29 new CMAs. I mean, that's that huge. Yes. Well, yeah. here's the thing I want people to hear that are watching this too right now. Um, she tracks, like, I love that you are tracking this is the, I'm trying to think of like a more eloquent way to say it, but people don't do yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, think yeah. about how many agents we sponsor things and we go do these things but we don't, we're not tracking to see what we're getting from it. And that to me is huge. I mean, you know, exactly how many entries you have, exactly how many news people signed up for your newsletter. I'm assuming you did 29 CMA. I mean, that is like, that's mind blowing to me. Yeah. And that, and that's just basic. It's super easy to do because you have your entry form yeah. and you fill out the entry form and there's like three questions on the bottom. And then you just, when you get back from the event, you put it all in your database yep. and you'll, and, and we divvy out the CMAs and the buyer consultations, depending on who was working the booth and who was there. And then they have 48 hours to call them and set appointments. And if they don't, then we have client care that now is set up to call behind there and get those ones set. 
Um, but, you know, I was working with, um, we have one agent that works in Corvallis and she's trying to build Corvallis the next town over. Um, and, and she's like, you know, what do I need to do? I'm like, you need to get mind share. So when you have that, we're not super good. The 431 people that enter in about following up with them because yeah. we have pretty good mind share in our community, but yeah. we need to create mind share for Corvallis. So we need to follow up with them with a 12 by 12 and eight by eight, you know, some different programs with them. So that way we do get mind share with those folks because they just can't see you once at a booth and walk away and then just say, oh yeah, well, who's that realtor? Or you're not going to be top of mind. So we're having to kind of do boots on the ground. So those of you that are just starting, when you get your entry forms, make certain that you put them on some kind of follow-up program that you can give value. Our first one will be, you know, here are the market stats for Corvallis. This is what's going on in Corvallis and just try to find things of value to add to them. So they're not going to unsubscribe from your email. Yeah. So I love that you said that. And for those of you that are newer and maybe some of you that are not, that have never even heard that, but I, we used to always say you need to get mind share before you get market share. And that's, that's what she means. They need to know who you are and they need to see you as the expert. They need, you need to be Toma top of mind awareness for them. Um, and then the market share will come once you get the mind share, uh, Brandy asked, and I actually wondered that what questions are you, um, asking them on the forms? Do you happen to know? Are you, yeah. Are you I, let me see. I think I have the form on here. Let's see okay. where it's at. Let me just go, go and there it is. This is an example of what a form goes in. So it says, uh, would you like to know what your home is worth in today's market? Yes or no. Would you like to receive a, a, our monthly newsletter? Yes or no. Uh, would you like a list of homes for sale? And would you be interested in receiving a monthly email regarding your neighborhood? So it's pretty simple questions. Um, and if they don't fill them out, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> but I don't want to try to go after people that don't want us to go after this is so good though. Well, and I feel like yeah. everybody wants to know what their home is worth in today's market. And I mean, you yeah. know, I, mean, I feel like those are such good, easy questions. And I like that you nailed it specific to, would you be interested in receiving a, a monthly email regarding your neighborhood? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it just, it just, and it's easy for them to say yes to. It's easier for us to follow up on. Yeah. Um, like, although I didn't realize on the brew fest, you know, the first one or second one I showed you was that, um, when they drank a little bit later in the evening, a lot of people were saying yes, because they thought maybe they'd win the growler if they said yes. And we called them right. like, oh, I don't really need a market analysis. I was just filling out the form. Yeah. And that's fine. It gave us a way to have a touch with them and, and to have some, some, yeah. you know, some feedback with those folks. Um, but definitely I would, you know, our follow-up systems need to be better with these folks, except that they do get the newsletter and we only really send that to people that opt in. So we're not spamming everyone. We tell them that when they fill out the form that we're not going to, if you say no, we're not going to email you. And yeah. we really don't. Yeah. So, but okay. we put you into our database and we tag you that you went to this event and we'll probably invite you to come the next year and come visit our booth. But do you have a lot of people that unsubscribe? I mean, I wouldn't think so because you provide such a high value. I would say, I would say, yes, we still have people. And sometimes we have people that unsubscribe that are our clients that are our raving fans. They are trying to tell everyone in a raving fan and come to the baseball game. And I'm looking on there and there's like 60 unsubscribes. And I'm, then I have to go through and text them or call them and say, hey, you've unsubscribed. We're trying to get your RSVP for the game or for the pie or whatever. And they'll go, oh my gosh, I don't know how I unsubscribed. So I have to send them out another thing so they can resubscribe to it. Um, but and it is a little bit frustrating but I also know I got to be really careful with this group that I'm not going to give them every listing I'm not going to tell them about open houses I'm not going to give them information if they're not yeah. interested in receiving that I'm not going to I'm not going to give that to them yeah. I'm just going to try to keep them abreast of what's going on in the market um, quarterly and then I'm going to invite them to these different events that we have um, have you do you have any more events on there anything that like what yeah. what what are your biggest turnouts like what do people love I got yeah, so yeah, so these little home shows and stuff that we do and biz expos, are, they work really great. We have our booth set up. We have um, normally always a drawing. It, it's fun fun to work these little events and it's a way to build your database. So I definitely would say doing that. Uh, National Night Out is a really good um, event for us. Um, we do that and that's in every community. It's free to us. The only thing it costs us are the otter pops that we give away. 
Um, we normally during this, look, it's under this one here this year, we got 39 new buyers. It's a lot of young families that are coming to National Night Out. So young families are thinking about buying real estate. So that was a good spot for us to pick up more buyers wow. um, at, at these events um, and to love on people and love on your community and just be front of mind and sit there and answer real estate questions and just just be involved. And they said, this stuff doesn't only cost us auto pops. This probably costs us less than hundred bucks. Wow. Um, this was something we did was a, it's because we couldn't have our client event one year uh, because of COVID. So we just, we did an outdoor movie theater and we yeah. had classic cars. We played Grease um, and it, and this, this married it up. We wouldn't have done this, but it married it up to Boys and Girls Club. We're doing this for, um, for a fundraiser for the club. And so we said we would sponsor, be a sponsor if we could do one night as a, cl uh, a, a client wow. event, a private event. And they said, yes, we could do that. And we were able to play Grease. And, and what is you know, that big a, thing that says event. meet the team? Is that like a big board? Uh, this that one, oh yeah, that was, a, that was the screen that they played the movie on. Oh, so cool. That, before the movie, we got to play our own little our own little um video of of our listings wow. and our team and that sort of thing so it Love made it, made it fun. um again that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the boys and girls club we wouldn't have done that all on our own right um this is a good example of this is movie night so um so movie night we have 300 we used to have 300 seats at our one screen movie theater in town and we would say okay we're going to be playing this this movie which is normally a a uh, old movie that we replay again and then when they say yes they'd like to rsvp then they get this little google form this is a great example we just keep using this form um yeah. but it just asks them you know would you like to um, purchase a home or an investment property uh, when are you considering selling your home so we can kind of have an idea of what what year or when they are um would you like a comparable market analysis um and then would you like to attend one of our complimentary classes you know i've so, never i've never seen that one i love that you have that in there i mean that is and i love that you have the million dollar real estate investor that's such a yes. great idea yeah and so before the movie even um played um we had eight cmas and 14 buyers from before from this it you even know, happened. before it even happened and wow. we realized with the movie is that people are in they get their popcorn they get their drink they go sit down there's it's not a time to ask for business it's not yeah. a time to have them fill out a form you need to get some of these events that we do and and right now we're doing um like our even our um, big client event, Pork and Tunes, we have them fill out an RSVP ahead of time so we know if they have any real estate needs ahead of time. So we're trying oh, to pair I up these Google that. forms. They're well, free. Yeah. And they're excited yeah. about the event. They're excited about coming. You're not, you're yeah. right. They're not like in it, you know, where you don't want to ask them for business. Then I, people always say, do you, should I ask for business at my client appreciation events? You know, and I think this is such a good way to do it. Just hit them on the front end. Yep, hit them on the front end on the RSVP, ask a few questions, or at the event, and you could do or and, have yeah. some kind of something fun to give away, like a Yeti cooler or, you know, a patio set or something, whatever you can find on sale, and then have them um, do a, a drawing entry form, and then you could do a drawing there at the event. Love so, that. Like a bigger barbecue or something. It doesn't have to be super expensive either, just something they might may want to do. Yeah. This is a pie day. I'm just trying to think what else I have in here for you guys. Wow, I love that. This is the stuff people love are the ideas. Oh, you do a chili cook off with the pie. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, and how we do that is that, and you could do this. Let's say if you're a single agent, and you're like, how am I going to do this? You could pair up with three or four agents at the office and yep. then say, hey, let's invite all of our past clients to come pick up their pie at the office and let's all do a chili and, and, and do a crock pot and have them come judge our chili. And that's love what that. they do here. So this is just our team doing chili. And then they go through and they taste the chili and they 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 do the voting and pick the best chili. Are so, you the and then does the can of whipped cream or something for a referral? Yes, Is that yes, you? Yes, okay. We do. Yeah, that's us. Yep. So we I have people that. to whip up a referral that's right there. So um, yeah, tell them so, about this. This is so cute. Yeah. So, um, so when we call our clients and ask them if they would like to reserve a pie for Thanksgiving or for, or new, for, um, 4th of July, we will say to them, if you could whip us up a referral between now and pie day, we will have a can of whipped cream waiting for you when you pick up your pie. Love and that. 
right there on the phone. They can't think of someone to give us. Um, but if they do, then we mark them down as WIP on, on the tag on the database. Um, but then between, because we call about a month ahead of time, between that time and Pi Day, we'll remind them, you know, 15 days before Pi Day, next week's Pi Day, if you can whip us up a referral, we keep reminding them to WIP um, all the way up to Pi Day. And then, of course, on Pi Day, uh, we'll ask them again if they don't, if they, if they want to do a, a, we'll ask them if they have any referrals and we can grab them a can of whipped cream. It just gives them a time to think. And a lot of times they'll just come up with the books. It's been going on for so long. They're like, okay, I whipped you up a referral. Like, I want my whipped cream and I got someone for you. And they'll just write it down. Like, they know the program now about the whipped cream and everything. But it does help us get more referrals on there. Yeah. So, um, and I, Wait, I remember you I got 932 pies. Yeah. And now it's over a thousand. Oh my gosh, Laura, that's amazing. <laughs> but this is very scalable though. Cause of the last two years, you only sold 20 homes. You're only giving away 20 pies yep. and then pick up the raving fans. People have given you referrals and grab those guys and offer them pie. So yeah. it's very, very scalable to your budget. So if you sell yeah. 500 homes, you know, I should be giving away, you know, the last 10 years I've sold over 4,000 homes so there should be 4,000 pies, really. Like they all yeah. should get a pie, but they all don't get a pie. Um, but they like to be asked if they want a pie. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Are it's, you, do you order them from Costco ahead of time? So many are from Costco. That's what we um, do. And then we all, we have a Safeway. I don't know if you guys have Safeway, but we've also, this pie here, the apple pies this year came from Walmart, but okay. now we get them from Safeway. Yeah. And, and for those of you that don't know with Costco, I know, um, I, we don't have a safe way, but I know with Costco that, um, I don't think there's a safe way, at least there's not in Kentucky, but, um, if you call and order them ahead of time, they won't put their sticker on the top. So you see how she has her stickers. You can add your stickers to the top. You don't have to worry about peeling yeah. one off or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Brandy asked if they don't opt in to your newsletter, um, or want to know about the current value of their home, what kind of follow-up do you do with those people? Hardly nothing. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not the best answer, but we basically do nothing. Um, sometimes, I don't know, if, if this is the hardest thing when you do a lot of events and stuff. Sometimes we've gotten so swamped and our systems have been so muddy is that we go from one event to the next and we go get the, the um, entry box for the next event and it's the, the tickets were still in there from the last event. Like that has happened to us. So yeah. trying to get proper systems down to follow up and do everything. It just takes time to, to implement all those things. So yeah. it would be great to have some kind of system saying, Hey, I know you didn't want to be on our newsletter, but is there anything we can help you with? It'd be great to be able to have something there to yeah. do that. If you had less, lesser amount of people, a lesser amount of system to take up your time, you probably yeah. could do that. But we just basically try to focus on people that have raised their hand that want our assistance and help. There's enough there to keep us busy that we don't have to worry about the people that don't really want to hear from us again. You know, and I bet I kind of like and appreciate that because you're touching the people that, like you said, they're raising their hand. Um, and if they don't want to, then you're probably wasting your time a little bit. But if eventually they will think of you. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to go to an event like this and, and then not think of you if they, if they want to buy or sell a house, even if they don't opt into your stuff, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even here on Apple Pie Day, it surprised me that 67 people said, I wanted to be on your newsletter. These are past clients. They should be on our newsletter. Yeah. But for some, they get off, they change their email. They opted out. They got remarried. Something happened. Somehow we lost their email along the way, or they somehow got off the program. So yeah. it's always good to keep asking people, do, do you like to receive our newsletter? Or yeah. is there it's hard to yeah, say. I think that's a huge part of it, but Brandy, I would say, yeah, like it, like Laura said, if you have the system and you can put them on just some type of touch or campaign, I would say, yeah, do that. Um, just because I, I don't think that there's anything that could hurt with that. So I do want to show you one other thing that happened this year with Pork and Tunes. Perfect. I'd love that. What is that? Is that like a... Yeah, I can show you pictures. It's our, um, it's our client event that we invite all of our clients to once a year. And then we have a band and we have um, barbecue and, and things to that nature. So okay. that, that's what Pork and Tunes are. Remind me, I'll send you the video. Oh, yeah. That. Okay. I'll put that down. I can do that. But pork before we did, video. yeah, before we did, yep, yeah, before we did pork and tunes, we had everyone do a opt in on a new on a, a Google form, mm -hmm. and this is the the people that opted in. So there was, wow, not it. 
any responses? Oh, you know what? I think there's some more. Let me see here. Let me go back here real quick because I know there was more than that. The nice thing on this is that you can look on the back end and see yeah. who's coming to you, who's got business. So, so this was, so this was basically their, you sent them an RSVP, but then they could opt in to receive things. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is them. Let's see if I can get to the right one here. Okay. So here's, here's okay. the, the, them, the, what they would see on their end of this. Yep. Um, and so, you know, this is correct actually. So it says, describe yourself. We are current clients. We are forever oh. clients. We are raving fans or we are future clients love that so they're able to say what they are and then we had just a little bit of information and i can send you this link okay. so remind me to send you the pork and tunes rsvp link it okay. reminded them what to bring um it asked them if they had any real estate needs in the next 12 months it gave a little bit of information about who the singer and stuff was going to be and we had 170 people respond to this wow before they came to the event and, and then we were able to, from there, you know, get their information, see if they yep. had any real estate needs, anything to that nature. And Gosh, actually, that's actually that's not so the one I was wanting to go to. Uh, I wanted to go back to Pi. So we changed up Pi this year. Um, and so we, for them, they would say, yes, they wanted the Pi on the Google form. Like mm -hmm. we did, we said, they said, yes, we then sent them to Google form. Part of it was because we needed to know the location of where they wanted to pick up the Pi. Right. Um, so. So the hardest thing was because they were just used to saying yes and coming in the pie is to try to get them to fill out the form to, to get the pie. So we had out of the thousand people that came to get a pie, 717 filled out the form. And so that was wow. a little bit of on here. Um, but we were able to look on this form and see who had real estate needs before they came up here. Can you whip us up a referral? No, wow. I, or me, 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 I have real estate needs. So they were able to tell us um, if they did or didn't. And it says here, no, I don't, but I tend to find one by June 30th. See the embedded command I just put in there for them to mark. They had to mark, if they marked, no, they didn't know anybody, but they were, they were intending to find one. Um, so this was the form they were able to go through this and we were able to gain a lot of information from here. We were able to see which classes they wanted to attend this year. So we knew which classes to roll out for the next. Love um, that. What, yeah, what, we, what if they wanted to attend most the home, um, home buyer class or I mean you got a lot of career nights on there too yeah so let's see oh yeah and, th and think about all the people in career night we wouldn't even know that they wanted to do it unless we asked um, yeah and so are you you're, you're just helping those people then what get licensed right I mean and yep, then yep and hopefully sending them to the market center <laughs> yeah have you um, have you had any past clients join your team while you're looking for yes. that yes. yeah I figured we have. Let me just see here real quick if I can show you. I love this. This is what people love is to see the stuff, right? You guys? <laughs> yeah. The tracker. I love to see the exact examples of the, of things because that's so helpful. We don't have to recreate the wheel on stuff. And you all, you know, I also, oh, was it? Yeah, it might have been raving fan, Jen. I don't remember. Uh, Laura, do you remember the four describe yourself, current client, forever client, something, and then future client? Uh, um, yeah, future. So yeah, your forever client, a current client, a raving fan, yeah, or a future right. client. What what what, it, what was the raving fan? It was raving fan means that you haven't done business with us yet, but you um, send us everyone you know. Okay, got it. Okay, perfect. That's Jen got it. Like yeah, so I'm trying to figure out here where, where Pork and Tunes is at, and I don't, oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, there's Pork and Tunes. I was trying to see Pi Day. Let's see if I can find that one. Um, we might not have gotten that, but here's Pork and Tunes. This is 278. This is entries when they when they got to the event that they wow. filled it out. And then right here, you see your 17 uh, CMAs, yep. 44 newsletters, 32 with buyer needs, 40 wanted home beats, and 163 circled nothing. What's so the home we beat? Can, home beat is like a, a market snapshot. Oh, of, of okay, right. Got of it. their neighborhood. Yeah. So we try to just take these and, and put these, what what the results are down on these sheets. I just yeah. wish I had the one for, for um, the you know, client event. It would end up working out really well on the client event. I'll see if I can find that handbook okay. to you because it end up getting gleaning a lot of information from that. You know what I love the about this though, you guys, and I hope you guys are writing this down and listening to this, but by the tracking, 
the reason I think, I mean, other than the fact that she's built just an amazing uh, mind share with people in the town, the thing that I love is that she's tracking this so much so that she's providing to them what exactly what they want, which is what keeps them coming back and sending referrals and sending referrals and, and all of those things. And over 45% of your business last year was either a repeat client or someone from your sphere. I mean, that's huge, really. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's huge and, and we need to do more of the outbounds, but, but it, it, it just takes, it just takes a while <laughs> to get everything. Yeah. And this is, really, this is prospecting and this is really outbound for us too, because we are prospecting at these absolutely. events. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see if I can show you one other thing here. I go back to the drive. Okay. So and then after that, I do want you to yes. talk about your hundred, how you took a hundred listings in one month. Okay. Because I don't think sounds... people believe me when I say that. <laughs> Yeah, I think our best year was 114. Wow. Okay. See, I didn't yeah. even know that. 114 yeah. listings. You guys in a town of 17,000 people. <laughs> yes. That was I crazy, mean, crazy. That is absolutely nuts. I mean, just amazing. Yeah. And this is our Pork and Tunes event. So if I can show you one, this is our client event that we do once a year. So it's just I a love the pictures. Of yeah. Yeah, so that's just it. I was trying to help see if I could find something else, but I don't know if I can find the results from you know, it. I so think we'll, also we'll too, you guys, that. just look at her touches per event, how many times she's touching them per event. I mean, I guarantee if you add up all the touches, you're probably doing 300 plus a year because of every, all the touches with every event, the before, the during, the after. And I'll let you know the checklist just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So here's a checklist for pork and tunes. I'll see if it pulls up here in just a second. Oh my God. So here's our parking. This is the event. Let's see if I go like this. Wow. So this is our setup. And then, you know, here is our, I'm just going to go slow here. Photo booth. Just, wow. Kid game, food. Yep. Yeah. So this is everything that has to happen to put on this event. It's, it's a lot. So anyhow it it but do you have an actual gets a event easier. planner do you have an is there a part a part like a part of your team that's an event planner or everybody just jumps in everyone jumps in yeah. so and, and that's important too to have a like a volunteer list um yep. and everyone jumps in and takes um part of the the setup day everyone's signed up you Love know, that. On the back end side and then we have like the different duties who's doing what and then everyone just goes in and signs up for what what the, they're passionate about what they want to help with and yeah. then we just have a little bit of information so if it's a new agent coming to the team um that they know what we're doing and what what does that mean and where is it located at on the grounds um all that good stuff so this is kind of an idea of that. showing how how people are signed up for different and the nice thing here, we have spouses sign up, we have sisters sign up, we have we have more than just our team. Everyone wants to jump in and, and, and join the in the fun, which is good. Okay, so let me get off of that. But this is something that's important if you're doing an event to have your oh, yeah. so you get it and your duties. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yes, these are great, um, okay. great ideas. So, so okay, hundred listing challenge. Okay, so that started uh, on um uh, like our coach basically said um what's your best listing month and i thought i think it was like august or something and how wait, many Laura, will, they, will you stop sharing your screen so they can see you now yes yes okay thanks okay sorry i know it's kind of hard for people to okay there we go there we go okay okay and so um and so it was like 25 so she goes Let, let's do a 50 month challenge in august and we said, okay, that's a lot. Like, I don't even know if I can do 50. Um, and so then uh, we we said, okay, we do it. And we kind of planned a couple months in advance, um, or maybe it was like one month in advance that we were going to do it. So we sent something out to our database and we said, hey, um, we've been challenged to take 50 listings in the month of August. And um, and so if you know anybody that's thinking about buying or selling, um, that we'd love to hear their information. We're trying to get to 50 and we'll keep you abreast of what happens. And if we make it to 50, then we would like to, we have this little 50s cafe in town. We'll get everyone, um, who, everyone who sends us a referral, which I don't think we're supposed to say that, a milkshake and a hamburger, and we'll invite everyone to this 50s party. And so that's they, cool though, that you included yeah. them as a part of something in the goal to get 50 yes. listings in one month. Yes. 
Yes. And so we put it out there and then like week one, we're like, okay, we have seven listings. And then week two, we're like, oh, we have like 24 listings. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't if I thought, oh man, I should have made this like a thirties party because I don't think we're make it to 50. <laughs> and then um, we kept each, each week. And it, as we got closer to the end, just like, um, we just tell them where we're at. We're at 38, we're at 42. And on the last day, an investor came in and gave us two listings. So we made our 50. Wow. Yeah. So then we said, then we said, everyone's invited. Anybody who's available for lunch, just come join us. We're so excited. We made 50 listings. So during that, um, uh, that event or that month, um, we broke stones. We had people crying, people wanting to quit the business. We had forgot to put signs up. I mean, there was, it was a mess. And so we realized where we were weak. It was total chaos. We realized where we were weak on the team and what we needed to be chored up and to, to be able to do 50 listings a month. Where do we need more people? Yeah. Um, and where do we need better systems? So we did that. And then and then we did 50 a couple more times. And a couple of times we missed it, a couple of times we got it, you know, that like it was not always a hundred percent of the time we'd get it. Um, and then we were challenged to 75 and we were able to make that. Then we were challenged to 100 and we were able to make that. And then I would let you know that. Um, that now, now we can take 50 listings, no problem. Like now it's not, not an issue taking 50, like that's normal, more, more normal months, but you have to stretch yourself and break your systems and figure out where you're weak at stuff to realize where the wheels are going to fall off the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we haven't been doing them in the last, oh, uh, I'm going to say since COVID, we haven't really done any listing challenges we do have a challenge on our team right now is that if they could get um, eight pieces of business signed a month um, for the next four months, so they have to get 32 pieces of business that we would um, take them to a, a Glover um, um, training in Florida. And yep. so the summit, and so we have that going on. And so if everyone got eight pieces of business of our listing agents got eight pieces of business, we'd break our records on some of the other things we have for our normal listings um, that we're taking so it's just a matter of pushing us without making the wheels fall off the bus yeah. um, and so so the hardest part now is that um, not all of our listing partners want to do like Katie one month did 25 listings the other time she did 20 listings and then she did 18 but she's in a spot in her life right now she doesn't really want to do that so right. when people don't really want to do it you have to have team buy-in for yeah. it otherwise it's not going to happen yeah, and so yeah. I would say right now eight a month is is um, workable, <laughs> yeah. and trying to get more than that is not in anybody's wheelhouse. Yeah, so that makes it tougher. So you have to really gauge what you have. But if you're doing it yourself, you you will look under couch cushions. You will look find CMAs. You will get it done. So I would say push yourself to do it. Just look at your best month in the last twelve months and say, hey, I'm going to double that this next this next go round, and well, give yourself a little bit and stay focused on it. I love that because I think one of the things that we put actually on our little marketing uh, thing for you was on this class was think bigger because I think sometimes we like thinking even 50 listings taken in a month and especially in smaller towns, I think our automatic reaction is like, holy, you know what? That's a lot. I don't know that I can do that. Um, but I think if I love that you were accepting to just thinking bigger and and pushing it and growing it and keeping keeping it going and you hit it and so I think that's just such a testament to if you if you commit to it and you actually are capable of letting yourself think that big just like you said like you'll go out and find them yeah and, and what I see the difference is is that like when we're doing a listing challenge, like I would give the example, like a guy came in to check our thermostat, which we need to check it here now because it's really hot in the room. Um, and so they, he went in to check thermostat and I heard two people in the, in the building ask him if he knew anybody thinking about selling real estate or if he had any real estate needs, all this stuff. Well, yeah. if it was a normal month and we weren't doing a challenge, he would have walked in, probably would have fixed the thermostat and walked out and no one would have yeah. asked him. But yeah. since everyone, it's on top of mind because we're trying to make a right. goal, then Yes, you're going to be able to ask your, you know, it's just forefront. But the thing is, you can't keep that up 24 seven, you know, right. you should, but it's tough to stay there in that, in that gas on mode. Yeah. So, so, okay. So we have three minutes left. Um, what are you doing differently right now to prepare for a shift in the market? 
anything, uh, any advice? Yes. Because, you, you know, over 80% of our agents have never been through a shift. Yep. So I would definitely say, you know, win the morning, win the day, um, yep. block, block your calendar out from nine to 11 or from eight to 11 or from nine to 12, whatever time you want to do and make certain that's the time that you're working on your new, you know, new business generation is in the morning and, yep. and try to set one appointment. That's my, you know, if everyone could set one appointment a day, even if your conversion rates are not that great, even if you're setting someone an appointment, they're like, yeah, we'd like to sell someday. You're like, I'm going to go do your CMA for you. At least that's building your future pipeline. Just try to fi find one person a day that you can schedule a set an appointment with. Buyer consultation, listing consultation, just do that and, and work on that every morning. Um, and, and if you don't get it done, save the afternoons to service your business, but in the mornings, you know, really dial down on what am I going to do with follow-up or new business generation going out to reach to, to fill your pipelines. I love that. You know, another aha I had today is like, you're doing a ton of CMAs. I mean, it, does that lead to the listings for you? Because you're just, yes. you're getting, you're telling them how much their home is worth. And then they're like, holy crap, now I want to sell it. Yeah. And once you plant that seed that, you know, someone does get some market analysis, it's amazing that all of a sudden they'll find the next property. They're like, oh my gosh, I got the market analysis and I wasn't even thinking of selling. And now a month later, I've got my house on the market because I found something else I want to purchase. So it just kind of kicks that into gear. If they have any thoughts of selling, it's hard sometimes to shut that off. Yeah, so. I love that. You guys, my question to you would be how many CMAs are you doing? Uh, ah, for, I mean, that's, that's a huge one, you know, because that's so true. Back in the day, that's all we did. When the market slowed down, we were just constantly doing CMAs over and over and yeah. over again. And I think because we've been in such a speed-based market that, you know, that might not have, have been happening as much, but moving back into now a skill-based market, I would make it a goal to do a certain number of CMAs a month would be great. Yes. Yes. Because you're right. Now that they know, they're like, man, well, I didn't really know my house was worth that much. So I've got this much equity, which, which means I could go purchase an investment property, or maybe we could move, you know, it's like, then they start, their wheels start turning. Yes. Man, well, I love send, that. Me email, send me an email of what I said I'd give to you. And I I'll will. Okay. Yes. I've got my list right here. And, um, and so we'll, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. And you guys, oh, you're uh, very welcome. Thanks for sharing, Laura. Thanks for giving of your time. I know you're so busy and I just appreciate you. I've just watched you from afar for so long. So thank you for doing this. <laughs> if you want me to come back and answer more questions, I can. Sorry, we ran out of time. Absolutely. Yes, you guys. Yes, everyone has found such value in this. Thank you all for thanking her. Okay. And I'll shoot you an email, Laura. And then we may have more questions after we share the recording. So I appreciate you. Okay. And thank you guys for yep. being on and have a wonderful day. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.